So many people ask me this question, which are the documents required for self-employed professionals for Express Entry of Canada? So if you are a self-employed professional or a freelancer, this video is for you because I'm going to answer this question in this video. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, this is Shitanshu from Dream Abroad. If you want to immigrate to Canada or Australia without paying hefty fee to the consultants, please visit my channel. I've got tons of videos on the immigration process of both of these countries. I regularly upload videos almost every week. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it right now. Okay, so you might be a lawyer or a dentist or doctor or an interior designer or a web developer, but you are working as a self-employed professional. You're a freelancer. So how can you actually prove that you were working for a selected NOC code how can you prove your job duties? How can you prove that you were getting uh, the payment for your services? So if you're working in the in any organization, then you obviously you get the you know experience letter. There are ways how you can prepare the reference letter. You will get the salary slips, all those things. But how can you prove your job duties, your salaries, etc. If you're working as a self-employed professional, let's discuss that. So. The key points in a reference letter are job duties. First of all, the job duties is the most important key point because you have to match the job duties mentioned in the reference letter with those in the selected NOC code. This is the most important one. Then your work experience was paid or not. They need to make sure that it was that a voluntary job or, you know, was is actually a job where you're getting paid so this is the another important point the third point is about your job duties were full-time or part-time now by full-time or part-time they actually mean that for one year full-time you should have 1560 hours and similarly for part-time the equal amount of hours so this is the minimum eligibility criteria for the work experience that is one year of full-time work experience. So this is the minimum. Okay, now we have to prove all of these points in uh, your through your documents. If you don't have the reference letter, you know, because you're not working in uh, any organization, you don't have the typical reference letter or an experience letter. So now we'll have to prove it through all the other documents. So which all documents can prove that? Letter of explanation, first of all, you have to mention each and everything very clearly in the letter of explanation. How and when, you know, it might be a case that uh, you're working earlier in a job and then after that you, you know, moved to work as a self-employed professional. So you have to mention that. What, what, which all documents you're providing over there, you have to, you know, mention all of those documents. Support your point that you are actually working as a lawyer or maybe a web developer or you know whatever so you have to mention it very clearly in the letter of explanation it should be so clear crystal clear to the investigating officer that he just reads it, it should be clear he just checks the document and approves your uh, application so first of all the document which should be required was would be reference letters from clients the second would be client contracts, then proof of payment from clients or vendors, business registration paperwork, tax filings, appreciation letters or mails from clients and screenshots of your website or promotional materials. Now let's talk about the first one, reference letters from clients. If you've worked for different clients, you know, provide the reference letters if possible uh, from most of the clients. So this will actually, you know, because for one client, you let's say you'd be working for uh, one month or let's say two months. For the other client, you'd be working for uh, five months. So it would actually, you know, prove that through the uh, through your reference letters that how long were you actually working for those clients and were you actually paid or not, it can be mentioned. And after that, uh, what were your job duties? The job duties point should be mentioned very clearly in the, these reference letters from the clients. Okay, client contracts. Now, nobody actually does business on uh, the word of mouth, right? You should have any contract, any written contract actually, which should prove that uh, 
you were actually working with that client so if you don't have the client contract with all of them you should have at least some of them so you should at least uh, provide some of the client contracts to support your points proof of payment from clients or vendors so definitely you would be getting some payments uh, from for your services if you have provide them provided them the receipts pro, uh, you know give them that if they have actually uh, you know transferred the amount uh, to your bank account you can provide that if they provide you the checks and you have the photocopies you can provide that all of these uh, documents will actually help now business registration paperwork let's say you were a lawyer and uh, you registered in the bar council so that would be a business registration paperwork you can definitely you know provide such documents this will help your points tax filings again if you were working and you were uh, getting paid for your services then in most of the countries you have to pay you know, some amount of taxes income taxes so that can also help in uh, proving your point that you are actually that you are actually earning that money through your job okay appreciation letters mails from clients this is another point this is not a very strong document but yes all these letters combined this makes up the thought of the investigating officer that you know you are actually working it convinces him that you are actually working so if you have the appreciation letters just put it in screenshots from your website or promotional materials this is another uh, you no know, supporting document if you were actually working um, as a web developer most people actually create their own websites or uh, so if you do have your own website provide the link to that website and uh, you know provide a screenshot as well if you actually you know had some promotional materials if you gave some ads for your services in different uh, you know platforms you can provide the reference to those as well so this will definitely help screenshots uh, would even be fine so this would definitely help in convincing the investigating officer that you are actually working as a web developer or a lawyer or an interior designer or dentist whatever okay so these are the list of documents that can actually approve your points that can prove your job duties uh, your payments etc if you think of any other document that can help you you can definitely provide you know remember as many documents as you can provide all of them will help will support your point of uh, you working for the particular noc code and you getting the payments all of them will help apart from these documents all those other documents like you know medical certificate proof of payments would all remain same this is just about the reference letter that people uh, who are freelancers actually face trouble with so thank you guys for watching this video if you like the video please click the like button and if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it right now.